Hey guys, today I'm bringing back to you episode 3 of my Discord JS bot development series. In this episode, I'm going to show you how to set up a basic command handler here in the message event. And we're going to be able to define the command as well as the arguments, which you can use in future commands for more advanced concepts. Then also the next episode, I'm going to go into a more efficient command handler, a command handler that is a lot more scalable. And that command handler uses a node package called FS, file system. I'm not going to talk too much about that in this episode, but in that episode, with a new command handler, which I'll probably post tomorrow or the day after, you will see what I'm talking about. But here, we're just going to start with a basic command handler, which is good for small projects, but not good for more advanced bots or bots that you're going to be growing over time. So here, we're going to be talking about arguments and arguments of a command allows you to define multiple things in that command. So for example, let's say you have a command where you want to mute another user for however time, a temp mute command, which I'm not gonna go over in this video, but I'm just showing you an example of arguments. So to temp mute someone, you may do something like this. So mute the user for 12 hours for Posting too many good memes. <laughs> this is this is gonna be the command like the test right here. So this is the message right here. Discord between here this Discord would detect detect the message between the brackets as this. So message that content. This will be it. Now, each word here is its own argument. As you know in, in arrays JavaScript here, the index the starting point of an array is zero. So this is zero, one. Two, three, four, four, five. Well, I can't count, so let me fix this. Five, six, seven, eight. So there are eight elements in this array, but the proper way to do it now, because if you want to have eight elements being executed, it will just really just be two the user and the reason. So you're just going to do user time the reason. So you'll have three different arguments here. And I'm going to show you how the basic use of arguments in a little bit. But for now, this is kind of like how I'm building out the command. So we're going to set up the arguments in the message event. And we're going to move this old ping command. We'll re-add it. But we're just going to remove that for now. So the first thing you want to do is define the arguments. So const args. So message.content, it gets the content of the message being sent when the message event fires. Then you want to slice it by the prefix. So this will remove the prefix from the array. And make sure you define prefix somewhere. So in this case, I have config.prefix. If you're wondering why I have a setup like this, just watch my previous episode on securing your bot token as well as using config files, environment variables. In this case, I have an environment variable. So once I remove the prefix from the array, I'm going to trim it. And then split it. I'll explain what this is in just a moment. So this will trim the command, well, the message. So there's only one space in between. Then it'll split it. So no matter how many spaces you have in between arguments, it still works as intended. So here I have one space in between. But let's say I had like five spaces. This will still be detected as index position five in the array. So that's why you're saying this up here. Then you get the command. You need to do args dot shift. This will shift, remove one element in an array and shift it by, over by one. So this removes the first element in the array, which is the prefix, and shifts it over by one, which will be the command mute. Then if you do two lowercase, this will make sure that you can use the command no matter what the case sensitivity is. So you can have an uppercase, lowercase, mix uppercase and lowercase. It doesn't matter which way you use it. All 
of these ways will work. Regarding like the say command or mute command, which I'm gonna say command, but this is why you'll want this. Now there's two more things you're gonna to wanna to add here. First, if any messages are by a bot user, return. Just, you don't want to do anything with it or it will get quite spammy if that does happen. And you also want to make sure that the prefix for your bot only returns the messages of your bot instead of other bots. So if my bot has, if two different bots have the same prefix and you don't add this line in, the your bot the other bot will respond to messages from the message event here in your bot. So adding this line here, message.content.index of. So this will check the, make sure that the index position, well, hold on. So this checks to make sure that the position of the prefix and the message array is position zero, like you see here. But if it's not zero, you're just going to want to return and make sure nothing is done. And that's where you can start out. And you can now set up commands. There are two ways to set up the commands. The first way, you can use a switch statement. And the second way, you can use if-else statements. I'm not going to go too deep into it here, but I'm going to show you examples of how you can use if-else statements and switch statements to set up your commands. But I will link more information about that in the description if you wish to read more. But starting out here, I'm going to use an if-else statement. First off with the ping command. So if command equals ping, then you can do message.channel.send. And that's how you will work that. So once you set that up, you can go ahead and start the bot and run the command with the prefix that you define. In this case, I have two exclamations of the prefix and this will return Pong. Now here's a neat trick that I recently started using probably like within the last couple weeks regarding if else statements. So if you only have one line in the if else statement, you can actually make it a one liner. And I, I really, I like to make commands one-liners because it kind of like helps like clean up my code and make it a little bit more simple. But you can simply do this if applicable. If you have a bunch of different lines or the line is really long, you could put it in its own function, its own body with the opening and closing brackets, or you can just do one line here. But it's up to you if it's a longer line. But just to prove to you this will work the same as how I previously had it. So that's the ping command and that's how you can use a command handler. You can add in more commands as well as your arguments. But I'm going to show you arguments while I show you how to set up a switch statement. But you know you can set up if command, actually I'll show you one more command, my name. So if the command is my name then I'm gonna have it send your display name in the guild. So you have a nickname, it'll show you your nickname. If you don't, it'll show you your regular Discord username. Well, I can show you arguments here actually. But actually no, this is just a variable. So your name is gonna be message dot author dot display name. Actually, let's do. Yeah, so message.author.display name. If they have a nickname, it'll show it just like I explained. And then we can just do message.delete. Just delete the bot message. And then message.channel.sin. Here I'm going to use template literals instead of string concatenation. I'm going to link more information about that in the description, but I 99% of the time use template literals and I use that using backticks. That's to the left of your number one key on your keyboard. I'm not sure about different keyboards. It may be the same on the Mac keyboard. I can't remember. But here I'm just going to say, your name is name. 
and just go ahead and say my name I don't know what I did. Um, since it's message author, you have to use the username. Since the message object stores, well, you can get the username directly from message.author instead of display name. If you want to get display name, you'll do message.member.display name. Your name is Anthony, so that's my name. And if I change my nickname to John Doe. Okay, actually, I'm gonna change this. Message.member.display name. So nickname will properly show. Your name is John Doe. So that's how it works. I'm gonna reset my nickname for now. So this is how you can use a simple if else statements for your commands. Now, to use a switch statement, you can just do switch command and then start from there. And then for the case, command and ping, break, actually, there's a reason why I'm doing this here, but I'm gonna show you why I'm doing this. Case, my name. Because ESNO will actually throw an error if you don't do what I'm doing here. Break. Break. So I'm going to move this in here. And actually, this will function just the same. I'm actually going to delete this. So here in the switch statement, as you know, ping will return this and my name will return this. And you can set up a default if the command is unknown. So if you want, if you want a response, if the command is unknown, then you can do message.channel.send. This command is unknown. So, and proof that it works. Help. This command is unknown. But if you don't want that message, then you can simply remove the default case, the default statement here in the, in the switch statement, and it won't return anything. You can also put here if not command, you can just do return and the same thing will actually yeah, I'll delete that same thing will Okay, yep, it should be good. The same thing will happen. So, help. Oh, well, not in this case. I think it doesn't exactly work in this case. You actually have to define what will happen if the command is unknown in the case statement. Yeah, so just use the case statement if the command is unknown. In the other command handler, which I'll show you in the next episode, you can actually do this. And if not a command, you can just return it. So next, we'll set up a command of arguments in this case statement. So we're just going to add a new case. And actually, we're going to add this back in. And we're going to do case. Oh, I'll explain why I'm using the brackets here in the switch statement in just a moment case say so this say statement is we're going to have the bot return the message you just sent using the command so if you did say my name is Jeff the bot will return my name is Jeff 
So first, we have to define the argument. Now, these are args right here. And I'm gonna make a mistake on purpose and I'm gonna fix it after we're showing you why I fixed it and why it didn't work. So we're gonna call the message, my name is Jeff, message, or response. I'm just gonna do args. All right, I just, you know, we'll, we'll do args because this is all the arguments, right? So we'll just respond with args and it should work just fine. So let's see. We'll do message.delete, message, channel.send, response. And then we'll break the case statement. So, my name is Jeff. Now, that's weird. If you just type in args and return that. Also, you know, you may have done it at some point like this because, well, you won't get the args, right? This will be incorrect here because this will only get the first, the first word, the first element in the array, which is my. And also, this isn't that efficient here because it just, if you console log this, it will put each array element in its own line. And you don't want each array element in its own line. So what you're going to want to do is you need to join the array. So if you look here actually in visual code, it will show you what join does. Adds all elements of an array separate by the specific separator string. So here in the join parentheses is separator. And it's a string. So you can define what separator. So say if you want each on the new line still, you can do new line. Or if you want to separate it by a backslash, you can as well. Or whatever you can do that but in this case we're gonna separate by a space so it's just my space name etc and if we do say who's the man or respond with who's the man just like that so that's how arguments work and like I said you know earlier in the mute command how that will look is I'll actually show you more down the road how that mute command looks and more explicitly but this is basic use of arguments and how to define arguments in your command for example like the say command and using variables in the my name command so I'm gonna wrap it up here with the basic command hand that I'm using and again, like I said, in the next episode, I'm going to use a lot more of an efficient command handler, which I use in all my bots, using the FS node module. So stay tuned for that. And as always, you may leave a comment down below if you think there's something I could be improving on. Leave a like if you like these videos and subscribe and turn on post notifications if you want to keep up with the series because that I would really appreciate. And I also have a Discord server called Nerd Cave Development which I would really appreciate if you can join and this is the hub of where all my bots are as well as the home of my YouTube series and if you're struggling on something with your code and you want to get help I would love to have you join and I can help and even like some other people can help here in the discord I'm still like early on in the series so there isn't much going on but again if you have some issues with your code please I would love to have you join and be able to help you where I can. So I'm into here, guys. Take care, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.